morning church and good morning to all those who are online as well um, as we've been reminded today is father's day so um, happy father's day to all the fathers and grandfathers in our midst um, as i was thinking about you know being father's day i thought wow what a wonderful opportunity to reflect on our heavenly father and so today's theme is our father um, i want to read from i'd like to read from ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 6. praise be to the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in christ for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So this is Paul just pouring out forth his praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter also in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5 says praised be to the god and father of our lord jesus christ in his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil or fade this inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by god's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be re to be revealed in the last uh, yeah in the last time God is our father but he's the he's God the father of our Lord Jesus Christ whom he sent to become the sacrifice for our sins and through Christ our father gives us such a glorious inheritance and we don't have to wait till heaven to enjoy that we start that right now so um, shall we all stand and just sing to God be the glory because he gives us salvation, he gives us eternal life, he gives us purpose in life and um, let's uh, all rise and sing this familiar hymn to God be the glory. To God be the glory.
that the people rejoice. How many of you are rejoicing this morning? Some of your faces don't actually show that. So can we just sing the chorus once again and just rejoice in the gift of salvation and the relationship that we have in our Christ. Um, maybe even just look at each other and just smile and just say, re let's rejoice together. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear. John 1, 12 to 13. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born of natural descent, children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision or of or a husband's will, but born of God. 1 John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. And you know, it's not everyone who is a child of God. It's those who believed in him and received Jesus uh, who becomes a children of God. Just because we're born in a Christian family, that doesn't make us a child of God, doesn't make God our father. And so when we come through Jesus, we have access to the father. So we're going to sing this very old song, Behold what manner of love the father has given unto us. Again, this is not a song to be sung, you know, to the Lord. It's a song to be sung to one another. Behold what manner of God, uh, love the Father has given to us. So let's sing this um, joyfully. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. in rounds um, so all of you who are seated on blue chairs well standing beside blue chairs you can follow me um, so we will lead we'll start off and those who are on the beige chairs will follow Dr. Rebecca over there and um, we'll so they'll come in after we finish the first two lines so let's try doing that we'll sing the song through twice and um, enjoy the truth that the song gives us Let's start. Blue chairs. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. chapter 6 verses 22 and to and 26 and 27 look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life I think uh, many of us have heard those stories about you know these fights in the schoolyard and the kid says, hey, do you know who my dad is? <laughs> and, um, you know, children kind of like to, you know, project their father's, you know, 
And, uh, but have you ever thought about it? Do you know who our dad is? Do you know who our heavenly father is? And, you know, Jesus says, your father provides for those birds that are there. You know, every time, every so often when you keep looking at the news, this James Webb telescope is showing more and more of the extent of this beautiful universe. This is our father's world that he has created for us. The flowers, the sunshine, and all of these beautiful things that we see. Our father is the owner of the universe. So what does that mean for us? So in another old song, which I hope you all know, this is my father's world. And to my listening ears, all nature sings. And then at the end it says, this is my father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is king, let the heavens ring. God reigns, let the earth be glad. This is my father's world. This is my father's world. And to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the years. This is my father's world. I rest me in the cold of rocks and trees of sky. Father, we want to thank you for the beautiful truths in this song, Father. Yes, with a word of your mouth, you created this whole wor world. And yet, Lord, you're still working on us. Lord, forgive us for the times that we feel that we're alone. We don't have anyone. When we have a heavenly Father who owns the universe. Lord, maybe there are some of us who feel like we are wandering alone. Lord, we pray that you will reveal yourself to us, even if you did to Moses in that burning bush. Help us to remember that the battle is yours, and we are called to just be your little children, following you and safe in your embrace. Amen.
So we've talked about some of the promises from the Father um, and the fact that, you know, not everyone can call him Father. A Father that provides for us. But he's also a pardoning Father. This beautiful story of the prodigal son and Matthew says, when he was still far away, the father ran to that son. He's the owner of the universe and all that's around us, but he's a God of great compassion and gives us second chances, third chances, and more chances. Psalm 103, verses 13 and 14. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. A strong father who remembers the delicateness of his children. And the next song may not be very familiar to some of us, um, but it's called His Mercy is More. And the second verse says, what patience would wait as we constantly roam. What father so tender is calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. So this is our father, a father who forgives our sins. What love could remember no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, newer.
not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you receive the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in the sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Lord, we thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus, that you died, that we may become the children of God, Lord. How blessed we are, Lord, that you have given us the spirit by which we can call you Abba, Father. Lord, we thank you for the intimate relationship we have with you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the confidence we have to come into your presence and ask of you, Lord. Lord, because it is your pleasure to give it to us as your children, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the divine and glorious inheritance you have for us and all the saints, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we will be celebrating this, O Lord, forever and ever, Lord, in your presence as you are our Heavenly Father and we are your family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. not many religions that um, have the privilege of approaching a God, a holy God, as our Father. And yet in, when Jesus was here and the disciples wanted to learn how to pray, he said, this is how you should pray to your Father. So many times you see Jesus referring to God not only as his Father, but as your Father after the resurrection. And, um, you know, he told that I would be going back to my father and to your father. And just the fact that Jesus is the firstborn of all of God's children. Um, and so our last song that we'll be singing, you may be seated or stand as you feel led. And it's just our father, hear our prayer as we prepare to uh, remember his death and resurrection through communion. Here I
Heavenly Father, we come to your presence with hearts full of thanksgiving and praises. What a privilege, Lord, for us to be able to call you our Father. Lord, it's only because of your love for us, your grace and your mercy that we stand here today. And Lord, we thank you for giving us this privilege of gathering together week after week to celebrate you, to remind ourselves of your love, to sing praises to you, to read from your word, to study your word, to fellowship with one another. We pray for those who are not able to join us today, that wherever they are, that you will be with them. We pray for those who have joined us online, that you will speak to their hearts. And we just commit the rest of this time together into your loving hands. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs> 